Thank you for staying with us on KTN Sunrise Live. Today is D-Day for those in post-primary um, schools, that is secondary schools and in colleges. Cupid has called for that strike and it's set to begin today. We're asking you our question of the day. Do you support the teacher's latest strike threat? Do you support the teacher's latest strike threat? Do send us in your thoughts on Twitter at Yvonne Aquara at KTN Kenya. You can also send us an SMS. 8040 is the number to get in touch with us. And this is what we're discussing. And now we have the national chair of COPET, which is the Kenya Union of Post-Primary Education Teachers, Mboko Milemba, who joins us this morning to discuss this issue and uh, talk about uh, the major issues that they have raised. Asante Sana for making it this morning. Thank you. Right, let's talk about the strike uh, and uh, what uh, your grievances are this time around with the government. Uh, thank you, Yvonne. Our grievances are precise and uh, they are historical injustices. They are issues we have raised with the government for quite some time. Last year in September, that's where we begin the story. When we called teachers out for a strike, we were talking about harmonization of the teachers' salaries and allowances with those of the entire civil service in Kenya. But then, uh, because that particular time, uh, we called the strike in September and the budget had been done mm -hmm. sometimes back in uh, uh, June, June yes. thereabout. Mm -hmm. We were told there's not enough money. So we were given harmonized salaries. Mm -hmm. But allowances were left out. This was commuter allowance. This was leave allowance. This was responsibility allowance. And other allowances like house allowance. Mm -hmm. So then we were told that when the next budget is read, 2013-2014, we shall factor this money in and we shall solve the issue of uh, full harmonization. That was in clause 2 of the 2B of the return to work formula, uh -huh. a document that we are in possession of and we have given the government authorities. So here we are. Now the budget was done a few days ago and we were very orderly organization as COPET. We went to present these views mm -hmm to the budget committee. We went to present these views to the education committee. We presented to every other uh, group that needed to have this. But then when the budget came to pass, nothing was put in the budget. Not even employment of the teachers. Mm -hmm. Not even employment of ECD teachers. And not even money for promotion of teachers. Mm -hmm. So for the first time in the history of this country, since independence, Teacher promotion has been freezed. It can cost the government only four billion. Okay, all right. Um, of course, uh, the big one is everybody talking about uh, the free laptops project uh, for class one that was awarded 17 billion shillings in um, the budget that was read uh, last week by the cabinet secretary for treasury. Um, and not as much that was given, you know, for promotion of teachers and the allowances, like you mentioned. Uh, is this also a cause for concern amongst the teachers? It is a serious cause for concern because, yes, being a progressive union, we support introduction of laptops. We only thought that we could be involved as stakeholders to make some decisions on how do we introduce them so that they are not uh, cost ineffective and also wasteful. Mm -hmm. But we are surprised that it, they may be coming at the expense of otherwise the teachers themselves because now we freeze the promotion of teachers we freeze the allowances that the teachers were to get mm -hmm. and we don't employ even the teachers mm -hmm. at the expense of laptops i think that is hurting and i think the government of the day the jubilee government which we support mm -hmm. greatly should realize that the success of the laptops will depend on the willingness the motivation of the teachers to also uh, actualize them and realize that project. Okay, you'd mentioned that these are historical injustices that the teachers, uh, you know, are trying to address, uh, you know, in regards to this latest strike threat. Mm -hmm. A lot of these things were, you know, agreed upon in the 1997 collective bargaining agreement. Um, so my question to you is, do you feel neglected by successive administrations of government uh, regarding this issue from 1997? All of these are issues that are still propping up, uh, you know, sometimes they're put on the back burner. Um, uh, and then you have to keep reminding the government that this is what we agreed on way back in 1997. Um, how do you feel about the successive governments that have come in uh, over time and over these years uh, and whether they've indeed addressed the plight faced by teachers? Oh yes, the 1997 agreement, I may not want to go into that greatly mm -hmm. because by that particular time mm -hmm. we were all in 
Yes, okay. And uh, the 1997 argument is, uh, is, is an issue that actually our counterparts are pushing, and I think they are pushing it well. Mm -hmm. uh, I sometimes only get surprised that it has taken us too long mm -hmm. to realize it is now about 17 years yes. all, all the way. Mm -hmm. But they have the grasp of that. Mm -hmm. But the document I'm talking about, mm -hmm. The one uh, that I'm talking about uh, on From terms September of harmonization is uh -huh. just last year. Uh -huh. And we agreed that we shall harmonize salaries uh -huh. and also harmonize all, all the allowances. But now the government seems to be diddy darling about it. Uh -huh. But governments have always played us as teachers. One government comes, just gives us a token, goes away. Another one comes, pretends they don't know what the, the other government did. So they come up, give, we have to go on strike, mm -hmm. they give us a token, mm -hmm. and like that, like that. Mm -hmm. I, we, we are ha having a lot of expectations of the Jubilee government, and we want to believe they should be able to honor this agreement of last year. Okay. Uh, however, talks with the Labor Secretary haven't been uh, successful. Uh, can we talk about the efforts that have been made uh, to avert this crisis up until the point that today you are still adamant uh, that you are going on strike? Yes, we one, we appeared before the budget committee, we mm -hmm. appeared before the education committee, we went to see the employer TAC mm -hmm. uh, we have been with the education minister mm -hmm. uh, yesterday the deputy uh, president and i want to thank him for that he was able to meet the minister for labor meet the minister for education mm -hmm. meet the tac mm -hmm. uh, we were not in that particular meeting mm -hmm. but that was a good effort toward res uh, towards resolving this uh, strike mm -hmm. then later on we had a meeting with labor and labor gave us the, uh, the, the promises that he said he had from the president mm -hmm. we took it we later we on went to the tac we met uh, the CS and all the directors of the TAC, mm -hmm. and um, we were able to reach certain resolves. But in the structure of the union, we want to, we really respect dialogue. Mm -hmm. But in the structure of the union, there are structures that also help in decision making. So this morning, we invited the National Governing Council. Mm -hmm. The National Governing Council to which we shall brief it, what we were told by the Labour Ministry, mm -hmm. the promises that we are being told, mm -hmm. the progress of, of negotiation, and then they should be able to make a way forward about it. But as for now, the strike for post-primary education teachers and colleges is now on. Okay. Where the teachers should stay away, awaiting the result of the National Governing Council, which I'm going to chair immediately I leave the studio. Okay, right. Um, when we talk about uh, Coupet and Nat and, and, you know, the National Union of Teachers has distanced itself from uh, the strike uh, call, indeed, the Kenya Secondary School Heads Association, which is meeting in Mombasa, has also distanced themselves, and the secondary school uh, teachers are the ones that uh, Coupet represents. Let's talk about this uh, schism, apparently, you know, amongst teachers, not not supporting it, and the school, uh, secondary school heads as well. Well, I begin with Nat. Mm -hmm. Nat comes out grey. They are neither white or black this particular time. But these are respectable unions, sometimes calling itself giant. We have been together with them at the Education Committee. We were with them together at the Budget Committee. Mm -hmm. And we have been pushing this thing. And uh, Yvonne, you have been following this. Then last minute they are like, we are not making a decision, we are not making a decision. But we have to realize, we have to fight for the teachers of this country. The only language that the government do hear us is the bold step that Kupet has taken. Mm -hmm. And this is the time when we did not expect our brothers to, be, to, to get grey. But that's up to them. And uh, we cannot talk on their behalf because they represent the primary school teachers. And also there's another time I, I came out very bold to, to say maybe the strike was not well timed. I don't know if mm -hmm. they are also taking that kind of position. Mm -hmm. Coming to the Heads Association mm -hmm. in Mombasa, the Heads are the biggest beneficiary of the, strike, of, of, of the strike that the teachers are holding. The teachers are carrying the burden of the heads when Mombasa. Finally, when we get these packages, they benefit most. Look at the harmonization package. Mm -hmm. When the teachers went out on strike, harmonization, the people who benefited most are the heads of institutions. So I think for them, they should be able to support this strike. But I don't know if they are being in Mombasa. Uh, maybe they thought that uh, a strike could disturb their meeting. Mm -hmm. But they are the biggest beneficiaries of the strike, which the teachers are holding. Okay. Um, let's also talk about uh, 
you know, the fatigue, the national fatigue, I think, that the people would have with the strike process. Whilst, of course, the plight of teachers has been well highlighted uh, in the press over the last 17 years. I think even we remember the times of Adongo. And for those of us who were in school at the time, Kioni, yes, that's right. Um, but do you think there's a point at which the public will get tired of supporting the teachers yes we do understand uh you know the plight of that and you know when we take a look at members of parliament and you know uh, other state officers who get higher perks but do you think it's going to get to a point on boko that the public say okay we're tired of of, of the teachers calling for strikes uh you know every few months or so uh the public uh, shouldn't get tired mm -hmm. uh and the public is the biggest watchdog of the governments mm -hmm. if you say the public should get tired of the teachers calling strikes because of their rights mm -hmm. it's like saying that the public should get tired of keeping an a, a third hawk eye mm -hmm. against the mps who are adding themselves money and money and money and money that should never happen. Mm -hmm. We must have consistent observation checks to what the government is doing. So the public, I think, should never get tired because we are asking just for our right. So at the same time as they check what the other people, especially like the MPs mm -hmm. who went in and ended up getting even more than they were earning by over 300,000, they should never get tired. Also, hearing the plight of the teachers who are asking what is rightful for them. Okay. They should never get tired hearing the plight of the people in Korokocho who are, right, who are asking for their rights there. They should never get tired of hearing the street children mm -hmm. who will always have a certain right to okay. defend. All right. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, the biggest uh, uh, casualties of this are always uh, the learners. And everybody says, well, while you're calling for strikes, what then happens uh, to the pupils uh, in the schools? Uh, is this usually a consideration when you call for a strike and uh, um, how it affects the children and their learning? A very serious consideration. Mm -hmm. By the way, as a teacher, we really love the children. And we only call out for strikes as a last uh, resort. Mm -hmm. But look at even last year when we did call for a strike and when the strike ended amicably, the teachers went out running. They hit the classes running mm -hmm. to recover what they had, uh, they had missed. The teacher himself, the teacher herself, is a person who loves the children and is not really uh, very comfortable when the children are out of class. But sometimes you'll notice, Yvonne, that even when we explain these things early enough, the government of the, the day will wait for a crisis. When the crisis begins is when they start running up and down mm -hmm. and then maybe blaming the unions. Mm -hmm. But we care about the children of this country. All right. Let's talk about the conditions uh, of uh, education in our schools. Uh, you know, the teacher to pupil ratio. Um, let's understand what a day in the life of a teacher is like uh, in this country. Let's talk about some of those conditions. Uh, for example, you know, even as we ask for the allowances, is it ideal for both teacher and pupil? Yeah, a teacher wakes up in the morning and must wake up very early uh, because you have to get to school on time immediately you get to school, you must have prepared your lessons. So that means the whole night the teacher should have been preparing lessons. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of the shortage of teachers, which is one of the issues that we are demanding for, we have a shortage of exactly 82,000 teachers. 82,000 uh, teachers. So he will get to school and because of the shortage of teachers, mm -hmm. he will have more lessons. So he has prepared for many lessons. Mm -hmm. Then we'll teach all these lessons. Meanwhile, the teacher will also be marking during the same time. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, the teacher is a lawyer, the teacher is a doctor, the teacher is everything, the teacher is a cook. We'll have to take care how these children have to eat, mm -hmm. how the children have to live peacefully, the legalities in school, mm -hmm. solving uh, problems mm -hmm. between students, mm -hmm. and even attending to their medical attention and so on and so forth. In the evening when the teacher breaks, uh, leaves work, which is usually very late also, because of extra work, he has to go back and prepare and mark. Mm -hmm. So the teacher works continuously more of a cycle and that is why we are talking about extraneous allowance mm -hmm. which I'm calling responsibility allowance because there are those teachers who are in boarding mm -hmm. who are in charge of boarding so they take care of the students mm -hmm. even in the night they work up very early as early as five mm -hmm. there are those teachers who are class teachers they are supposed to take care 
of their classes as mothers and fathers. Mm -hmm. They are a head of departments, then they are deputies, and so on and so forth. That's why we are talking about uh, responsibility allowance. Responsibility allowance is given in other areas. Mm -hmm. I have a breakdown here how it is given in other areas, mm -hmm. but for the teachers, it's not given. The other one which I talked about, leave allowance, is there are only the teachers who don't get leave allowance. It's so interesting that the TSC, the employer of the teachers, mm -hmm. it has some staff, the secretariat. Mm -hmm. The secretariat, the lowest person within the secretariat of the TSC, and 6,000 leave allowance. But the teachers who the commission has employed don't earn a single leave allowance. These are cases of discrimination. Okay. So that's the life of a teacher very difficult. I'm a teacher myself. I did it for 21 years before coming into the union business. All right. Um, and let's touch on the laptops program now for just a moment. Uh, are teachers in, uh, well, obviously this is something that will affect those that are going into uh, a class one, for example, and not necessarily uh, for those who are in secondary school and in colleges. What do you think is the effect of this on, you know, the overall education system? Uh, do you think, um, you know, the structures are in place for this and do you think this will affect children as they go subsequently even into secondary school and colleges? I'm a very bold person. I don't fear new experiences. So I don't fear laptops being introduced. Mm -hmm. Because I know many Kenyans who, re who really wonder, can we really take the laptops? Mm -hmm. Me, I don't fear that. Mm -hmm. But I thought uh, as stakeholders, we should have been involved to see at which stage can you introduce them correctly so that they don't become very wasteful. Mm -hmm. Maybe standard one would have not been the best mm -hmm. level to introduce the laptops. Maybe we would have talked at another moderate level where the, the children can start grasping this, this, this laptop mm -hmm. and know that it is a tool for learning and not uh, a present from the president to play with. So that would be what we require. At in what terms point of do you think Mboko would have been uh, a good time to introduce it, if not class one? Without much consultation, I would have mm -hmm. thought maybe class four and then form one, mm -hmm. so that we grasp, we grasp those two levels, mm -hmm. class four and then form one. Mm -hmm. And then we should have talked about uh, be uh, beginning with maybe centers where these uh, laptops mm -hmm. can be to serve maybe several schools mm -hmm. within our, our, our reserves. Also, we should have thought of uh, a lab, um, uh, what, what, what computer, co labs? computer labs uh -huh. to preserve this. Because uh -huh. the laptops will be given, uh -huh. these children will go with them at home. Mm -hmm. uh, now we are saying that the government takes, the, the parents take care of the laptops. Those laptops may not reach home. A class one with a laptop, mm -hmm. will, they will just disappear on the road will be snatched mm -hmm. or will just lose it will go to swim in a river you know me i'm i'm, I'm old school and the laptop will remain there mm -hmm. and the parent will say i have no money to pay twenty eight thousand right. for another laptop so i think uh, yes i welcome the laptop project mm -hmm. because i know the future of this written work mm -hmm. is not uh, is, is is not very bright and that is why you are not having any paper me mm. i'm having paper i may be old school <laughs> they say analog <laughs> but i know technology is what's taking over uh -huh. Uh, but then uh, we needed to, to seek the stakeholders' opinions on how we can reduce them. And then motivate teachers. Okay. Look at now we are, what we are having. Uh -huh. Bring in new children, class one. Uh -huh. Give them laptops. Teachers in primary schools, not motivated. Mm -hmm. And you want them to actualize laptops. Mm -hmm. Teachers not trained. In one of our, 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 our grievances here, mm -hmm. we are saying that the government should have set aside money for training of teachers before they introduce mm -hmm. the laptops. Okay. Yeah. Do you believe that will happen between now and January 2014? Because I think, uh, you know, that's when the rollout is expected. Do you think all of these steps will be taken into consideration and that perhaps by January 2014 we have teachers who are familiar with it, that there's digital content and that's, uh, you know, put in place for uh, the students in class one? Uh, I, I believe it's possible, but it's only possible if the teachers themselves are happy and are working in a happy environment. Mm -hmm. But if the teachers are not happy. I had my, my our other colleagues saying they, they might think of even sabotaging the laptops at class one. Mm -hmm. So you see the stage is set for a very bad fight. Mm -hmm. Very, very bad fight. Because if the teacher sabot sabotages teaching, I think we are done. Do you think teachers are valued in this country uh, to the extent that they should be? 
no 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 they are not valued to the extent that they should be uh, many governments and many individuals uh, do, do not regard teachers as important people you know the teacher was valued a long time ago and this is historical because at that particular time every moneyed person depended on employment mm -hmm. and teachers were among the earliest people to be employed isn't it mm -hmm. but now with the opening up of other avenues to receive money even somebody who may have not gone to school and may not having may not be having employment will have money and this country ha is now being ridden by money 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 those who have money tend to be respected those who don't have money are not respected so teachers cannot be respected because we don't have money we are not well remunerated and that is why we keep on uh, calling sometimes for strikes it is very desperate moves very last options to try and actually ask the government of the day that this group of people are here and they need to be well remunerated. Okay, let's talk about the, the union of the teachers and Kupet recently broke away uh, from NAT. Perhaps not many people will remember or will understand uh, why they need to have two unions for teachers and some people saying um, that perhaps this could also have led to um, the fact that now you're not able to bargain with the government as you can see now, NAT not so sure about whether they want to go on strike. Kupet remaining firm in that resolve. Let's talk about um, the breakaway. Uh, you know, of Kupet from NAT and, and the formation of that and why that was uh, found necessary? 1998 is the party point. But before that, there was 1997, we were together in the same strike. Mm -hmm. And that, that brings in fray of those who care about history, uh, Adair Adong. We, we refer to him as the doyen mm. of trade unionism, mm -hmm. apart from Kioni, who was there earlier. Adongo had seen this happen that uh, the circle school teachers and the Tasha institution teachers were not being represented in the leadership of, of, of KNUT. And in fact, that, at that particular time, a circle school teacher could not join the KNUT. They did not believe in the second school being in the union. They mm -hmm. thought if this teacher is in the union, he can be a problem. Maybe he will come up and seek for positions within the other union. And that's one thing they really defended. So you would beg and beg and beg to be a member mm -hmm. of that union or not. But in 1997, mm -hmm. when we had the grand strike, the one that uh, produced what is being called the, the legal notice. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, don't go holidays, as many who were in school at that danced, time would remember that. A, yes. a set house. That's right. All the second teachers were now put mm -hmm. in, uh, in KNUT. Mm -hmm. But the following year, 1998, another strike was called hurriedly. And when that uh, uh, the trust strike was called hurriedly, the, 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 the preparation was also not very good. And the second school teachers were now asking, really, are we being represented well in this particular union? Now they were in. So they started a the question from inside. Uh -huh. Are we getting the correct representation? And I think that is how uh, Coupet started being built. Uh -huh. So Coupet was then formed in 1998, and it has been there since the year 1998 we should have actually and we should even today because this is leadership for the teachers of this country we should be using our units whether cupet whether kenyut or any other that may come up very well to combine to actually succeed to fight for the interests of the teachers and we should not use uh, those positions as a weakness mm -hmm. to weaken the bargaining power of the teachers. I don't mind consulting KNUT at any given time. <laughs> In the last strike that, success, that succeeded, we were meeting. I want to tell you, this, these are facts. We are meeting behind the scenes and agreeing, we are moving this, we are moving this, we are moving this. But sometimes, once in a while, egos do develop and rise up, and then you'll find that one group says, no, uh, we take a different route. Okay. And but so on generally, so the relationship between KNUT and Kupet, um, cordial, hostile, how would you term them? Oh, it's hot. Cool. Sometimes very good, sometimes very bad, mm -hmm. but we keep on going. Okay. Yeah. Would you say um, that the challenges facing uh, teachers in secondary and uh, college and tertiary institutions may be somewhat different from those in primary school? Especially if I pick up at, at, at 1998. Mm -hmm. The representation of the other union did not understand the challenges of the teachers mm -hmm. in the second schools. Mm -hmm. Because, for instance, let me talk about simple 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 challenges like those ones of disciplinary actions whereas in the other system mm -hmm. their the, the, our other colleagues their discipline was based on uh, the structure of the deo mm -hmm. in the second schools it was based on the boj 
but we did not have leadership in the other union that could actually venture in the boards of governors. Mm -hmm. It's only with the coming up of Cupet that Cupet now goes for the BOG meetings and to look into the discipline of the teachers within that particular structure. So the challenges in the second school are actually different from the challenges in the primary schools, but others are similar like shortage of teachers mm -hmm. is similar mm -hmm. and uh, many many others but the other challenges like disciplinary issues okay. and so on and so forth tend to vary so we understand better the issues of second school teachers than our colleagues in All the right. primary sector. And when we talk about uh, the quality of education, um, issues have been raised regarding this uh, in our secondary schools, in our colleges as well. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, the quality of education that is being provided? Where do you think the problem lies? Is it with uh, the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development? Is it with the teachers themselves and how they impart the knowledge that they know? Is it that perhaps the teachers themselves are not trained on what is uh, you know happening in the market let's talk about the quality of education and the graduates that we churn out from uh, KCSC and from uh, the colleges that we have around the country the quality of education will depend on one KI because of the people who produce the material for curriculum so if the material are not uh, the correct ones and mm -hmm. the very best ones, then the quality is bound to go low. The quality will also depend on KKI because what are we producing as uh, a syllabus and the material and how do they relate to the other East African countries? Mm -hmm. How do they relate to reflect to the world all over? Are we able to produce a person here who has gone through a curriculum and mm -hmm. can serve in the Americas and uh, Asia and so on and so forth. Then uh, the quality will also depend on the teacher training. Mm -hmm. If we are producing quality teachers, like the teachers, you know, this is, this is a fact. The teachers who were produced at uh, Kenya Science those days and teachers who were produced at KTTC were actually ranked as uh, very good teachers. And the teachers who went through prison, mm -hmm. there are teachers. Mm -hmm. Teachers who came out from Egerton mm -hmm. under what was called GP, uh, I think it was GPA. Very, very quality teachers. So those are the training of the teachers is very, very vital. But now with sometimes mass production, we hear in the universities, uh, the, 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 there's a lot of crafty ways of just going about it and production of the teachers. Then quality will also depend on the delivery of the teacher in the class. Mm -hmm. And the delivery of the teacher in class depends on the child, uh, teacher, uh, student ratio. Mm -hmm. Like now the quality is uh, rather bad, mm -hmm. especially in the primary because in the primary sections uh, teachers have classes of over 101, 89 students mm -hmm. and very small, small, small kids so you cannot control them and mm -hmm. that's the quality. It may not be very good. But if we work on teacher employment, mm -hmm then we are likely to improve on quality because delivery will be perfect. The teacher will have enough fewer scripts to mark, mm -hmm. check, correct, and the quality will actually be enhanced. All right. When yeah. we take a look at colleges now and, uh, you know, talking about the fact that uh, we're perhaps removing this level of skilled labor, uh, you know, vocational training in, in colleges, uh, with many colleges seeking to become universities very fast and offering degrees. Uh, you know, some say, well, the colleges that would offer uh, vocational training, uh, that would offer skilled labor, um, you know, are, are slowly uh, diminishing with every college wanting to convert itself into a university. They're all allied to Jomo Kenyatta University of Nairobi. Uh, and then slowly getting the charter um, and, and who's going to train the masons and the carpenters and the plumbers in this country? Um, is this a concern that you uh, that you share? Serious concern, and during the during the uh, production of what has been called the Education Act, we were very firm. And both at KICC and in Naivasha, where I was, and together with my team, were very clear that this cannibalization of middle level colleges by the universities must come to an end. And I think now, in the Education Act, the late Mutula, perfect guy, mm -hmm. he put a statement there to that effect that the we that should help to bring to a stop the cannibalization of uh, middle colleges by the universities. And it went ahead to create Tiveta. Mm. a body that should now manage mm. these middle level colleges. Mm. This is also in the act. Mm -hmm. uh, this could be off the cuff, but the only problem that uh, I think Tiveta will have is they were also given powers to look like they can employ teachers when that is a, re a reserve of the Teacher Service Commission. Okay. But I think uh, the minister who is now, no, they now called cabinet secretaries mm -hmm. will have a look at that so that it is corrected because we cannot have two bodies employing teachers. That was a fight that the union the union 
has had for a long time mm -hmm. that we should have one employer. Mm -hmm. So we stand for middle-level uh, colleges, remaining middle-level colleges, to produce the middle-level skilled artisans mm -hmm. uh, in the vocational training. Okay. Let's get back to the strike now as we conclude our discussion. Um, you <coughs> the strike is still on, but there's a National Governing Council uh, meeting that you're going to chair. What is the way out? Are you still open to dialogue at this point? Um, you know, even with uh, the Cabinet Secretary for Labor and, of course, the Cabinet Secretary for Education as well. Um, are there any talks that are scheduled for later or do we just wait for uh, the National Governing Council resolution? We had talks yesterday with mm -hmm. Labor. Mm -hmm. Labor indicated that we shall have further talks with uh, him, education, and TSE, and is scheduled for that meeting uh, on Friday. Mm -hmm. So we have a meeting on Friday. Uh, the president also and deputy president mm -hmm. intervened mm -hmm. and said that we should start talking. We are open to discussion. Mm -hmm. Very important at this level of leadership dialogue is very very important. So we get to this to level uh -huh. because we have not been listened to. But this is the language also the government hears. I have to do my work very well. So the strike is on. Mm -hmm. The teachers of second schools and colleges should not be in school today mm -hmm. until when we meet the National Governing Council, the organ that we shall present to, the options that we have been given and the levels of negotiation so that they churn the way forward. In the course of today, I think we shall be releasing a press statement okay. towards that. All right. So open to dialogue, but still on strike. Yes. Okay. And that is how we do it. Mm -hmm. You have to follow the two channels very correctly. You are on strike, but you are also dialoguing. How successful do you think this will be? Um, do you think uh, the, the teachers in secondary schools, will we do a spot check of secondary schools around the country and find that teachers will not be present in the classrooms? That is now for you. I'm sure you'll be doing that. And uh, we shall be seeing that. We shall be seeing your report this afternoon. But right, for but me, as the chairman, yeah. I'm expecting total success. Okay. Yes. But you think the message has gone through, even though the school heads association have said they won't uh, be party to this? Do you think they will play any role in it? in Mombasa. The I was to go to Mombasa myself. Mombasa is, uh, I hear, a very good place to go to. But I did not go to Mombasa because mm -hmm. of the teacher's mm -hmm. demands, because mm -hmm. of what I want the teachers to get. I canceled Mombasa. I sent there my vice chairman, mm -hmm. and I'm in Nairobi. I think when we are looking for what the, the rights of the teachers, even Mombasa should never be an issue. First things first. That was Stalin of Russia. I find the teachers rights first, Mombasa second, and anything else second, okay. everything else third. Are you confident, finally, Omboko, that uh, the president and the deputy president now weighing in on this issue and you know, urging all stakeholders to uh, sit down and, and, and discuss this issue? Are you confident? Do you think that this will be the administration that will finally solve the issues that uh, teachers face? This is a smart group of leadership. Look at the president energetic, young, and moving. Look at the vice president. Very active. He convened a meeting yesterday. We trust in them. And we are just begging them, deliver this very quickly so that we don't have this impasse. Okay. We right. have confidence in them. Okay. All right. We thank you uh, for making the time to be with us. We know you need to go and chair that National Governing Council very quickly and make some resolutions and see the way forward. We have been speaking to Omboko Milemba, who is the National Chair for CUPET, which is the Kenya Union of Post-Primary Education Teachers, maintaining that the strike is on and promising that no teacher in secondary school and in the colleges will be in the classrooms um, starting now. And we will await those resolutions. We'd ask you the question, do you support uh, the teachers? teachers strike threat this time around. Uh, let's just read uh, some of your um, messages that are coming in. Elijah, you say, teachers have a ground to strike because this laptop deal is not ethical while pupils are still learning under trees. Uh, we have another one uh, saying it's very tiring to have a respected lot of professionals being identified only with strikes. Teachers organize yourselves. Um, then we have another one um, saying a Pandora's box was opened by MPs. We haven't seen anything yet. Uh, Steve is just happy to see his uh, former teacher, Mboko, Steve Odia.
he says my teacher represents teachers with uh, a lot of wisdom like he taught me nathan you say yes let everyone get their dues it's now teachers next month the doctors they can also try let's occupy treasury um akumu michael you say it's always the best language the state understands as a teacher i believe uh, it's unethical but it is my right herbert ambati you say let them talk first if it fails then they go on with the strike well that strike is on we'll be waiting to see what happens the talks carry on the president the deputy president the cabinet secretary for labor and uh, indeed the cabinet secretary for education the tsc all of these stakeholders are coming together to make sure they can avert this strike but for now it remains on we will be keeping you updated with the events of this teacher strike as it continues to um, unfold right that's the show for today on sunrise live uh, i want to leave you with my quote of the day and uh, indeed it's talking about greatness they are only truly great who are truly good i'll take that again they are only truly great those who are truly good greatness and being good go hand in hand that's from george chapman we leave you with those words of wisdom this morning remember we do this again tomorrow we look forward to being with you again have a very great day ahead my name is ivana kwara bye-bye